We read news every day. News that's informative, but rarely encouraging. The Intermountain Christian Newspaper aims to change that. They present the news you need to know, from what's going on in your community to your world, with encouraging words, motivation, and the resources you need to make positive changes in your life. What is your local government doing that you need to know about? What's happening in your community you need to be a part of? Whether it's a story from your neighborhood, a national story, or an encouraging word, you'll find biblical issues of everyday life in the Intermountain Christian Newspaper. Intermountain Christian News is produced and supported by the work and donations of individuals and churches. You'll find it at churches, Christian bookstores, by subscription, and online at imcnews.org. To find out more about supporting this local resource, go online at imcnews.org or call Intermountain Christian News in Boise, Idaho at 208-703-8688. The Intermountain Christian News, a voice sharing the truth on matters dear to people's hearts. Are you tired of the secular news? Do you want a Christian view of politics? Do you want to know what is going on in your Christian community? Your wait is over. Welcome to the Intermountain Christian News Hour. Here is your host, Dr. Anthony Harper. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here with Intermountain Christian News Hour. I love to make a difference, giving Christians a voice. Uh, Our newspaper, A Voice of Truth, at imcnews.org and Again, here to talk with my good friend Gina Gibson, National Day of Prayer, Mountain States from Laramie, Wyoming. Well, Gina, um, it's great to have you join me again to give our listeners some updates on what's happening. Well, thank you for having me. It's a beautiful day here in Laramie. You know, we're all rejoicing because just uh, several weeks ago, um, we were still having some big snowstorms here and power outages because of all the heavy, wet snow. I do think uh, summer has finally arrived, and it's been a very warm day, sunny day today, and we've had uh, some thunderstorms, which our prairies out here desperately have needed. So I know the ranchers are are rejoicing because they've got a great uh, water supply, so that's a real praise the Lord. You know, our Christian ranchers tell us that, you know, that when they get a good, good crop, a good hay crop, that helps, of course, with what they do. So, um, yeah, it's a very nice time here. How is it there in Boise? Oh, it's uh, it's nice here. It's been a little, a little hot, unusually hot, um, yesterday and the day before. But uh, anyway, it's we're not having snowstorms. Um, uh, I I don't care for the hot weather myself, Gina. But uh, anyway. <laughs> Yes, well, you know, and I mean, we'll have our cool weather soon enough. And, you know, this, of course, with it being summertime now, is the time that we do uh, much in the area of child evangelism, you know, because the mm-hmm. kids are now out of school. Vacation and Bible schools. Sir. That's that's right, vacation Bible schools and camps. And Stan and I just finished um, the Cooperative Vacation Bible School here in Laramie. We had been part of the Cooperative Vacation Bible School for many years, Um And then the last time I think we actually served in it was 2004, and then the Lord just kind of shifted our direction and um, started doing more in the realm of the National Day of Prayer and moved a little bit away from the child evangelism piece. But um, this year, the Lord really called us back. So here in Laramie, we've had um, quite a few ministries working together towards, you know, bringing the gospel to the community and... um, just had over a hundred every day, probably, at our VBS, and just had a, a wonderful time, you know, just being with the kids. And then in two weeks, well, and not actually now two weeks, in about a week and a half, I will be heading up to um, Sheridan, Wyoming. And I know that I have uh, talked about that on this broadcast before. That they actually have one of the largest community vacation Bible schools in the nation. And um, up there, we usually look at probably about four hundred kids a day that attend there at the YMCA in Sheridan, and that will be June 21st through the 24th. And I look forward to taking my granddaughter, Jordan, for her very first time to be at Vacation Bible School. This week I took my granddaughter, Addison, here in Laramie to her very first time um, for Vacation Bible School. So as a grandma, that was a very special thing for for me. Oh, yeah. Very special memories. Uh, I've had, I guess some, I have some wonderful memories. Vacation Bible School and great opportunity to learn more about Jesus, uh, the Bible, and uh, so may that ever be blessed. May uh, may all the children enjoy that and uh, be inspired in their faith in Jesus. So, 
Yes, and I would remind people, you know, in the summer, especially since this is the time when, um, you know, the kids are out of school, to be praying for children and youth, that they would, um, you know, take opportunities, those opportunities that many communities do offer for vacation Bible schools. And, you know, sometimes people will send their children um, just for a place for them to have some some fun and, you know, some arts and crafts and games. But we really do want the children to hear the gospel and to understand that God loves them and that they need to accept Christ. And so that can start, you know, at a very young age. And so, you know, my prayer for my community all the time, my heart is always the very heaviest for the kids that no one takes to church anywhere. And for many years, I have had a burden that uh, and prayed about, you know, whether the Lord would allow me to to start something again, you know, and um, I'm very busy, obviously, with prayer ministry, but start something again, you know, to reach those kids that um, nobody's reaching because they're not hearing it in school. And if nobody's taking them to church, they're not having the opportunity to hear. So, you know, if the listeners would just, you know, even as you're listening, take a moment, pray for kids in your neighborhood, you know, in your city, um, that they'd have an opportunity to um, be invited to one of these church programs and hear the gospel. Yep, they need to hear the gospel. Nothing, just nothing like it, you know. And and uh, we love to share the gospel message uh, through our newspaper, uh, Who Is Jesus section, and uh, that's the most important people know, know Jesus before it's too late. It's very serious times, and, and I know the National Day of Prayer is uh, doing all they can to... Um, you know, get the uh, the word out about the importance of repentant prayer, and and we've got the um, Franklin Graham's uh, Decision America tour going on, and and, uh, and you've got an event coming up in July in Washington D.C. Yes, we do, and I know we have mentioned that on the broadcast as well. Um, many from across the nation will be heading to Washington, D.C., and our leadership summit um, will be July 14th through the 17th, and we're converging with uh, a group of young people called um, Together 2016, and um, they have a, an event there on the National Mall on July 16th, so we will be spending most of the day there um, on the mall that day just in prayer with uh, they're hoping for a million people to be there I don't think they're anywhere near that yet but I do believe that they're over uh, probably well over a hundred thousand have registered to be there and uh, you know there'll be prayer tents there'll be worship there'll be those leading us in prayer but what I'm really excited about is that God does have this um, this movement among the young people, you know, these are the 20 and 30 somethings that are saying that, you know, um, that their generation needs a touch from the Lord. You know, in fact, I think they're calling that particular event reset and meaning they need somebody to push the reset button, you know, cause they realize that their generation is in trouble and uh, that we'll lose a generation if something doesn't change. So I'm excited that they're leading out, and um, us older folks and people of all ages are just coming alongside to support what they are doing. Very exciting. And uh, and we mentioned uh, last week about the Decision America Tour, and uh, that that is such a crucial uh, issue. You think about what uh, Franklin Graham is is addressing, getting the church vote out, and... uh, I think that Christians have not made enough difference in the previous elections, and we can make a difference in this, I would say, very uh, pivotal year. Um, and uh, some some Christians concerned about Donald Trump issue, and uh, there's a great article in our newspaper about those concerns um, that explains it pretty well, uh, that appeared in Baptist Press. And um, so I, I do pray, uh, Gina, with... Uh, you and Franklin Graham and, and many others that um, this year, like no other, that we'll have a, a, a largest Christian voter turnout and uh, that we yeah. will be voting for candidates that God would want us to. So Yes, and ask God who he would choose. You know, I know that there has been that question. People say, well, who will I vote for? Well, really pray about it. And, you know, of course, look at the information and really ask the Lord who he would choose. You know, from those, uh, and God could still surprise us. You know, God is, this is not too um, big for God, and God is not unaware of what's happening in the United States of America. And so many people, um, 
you know, are really getting on board with praying for the nation again, which um, has always preceded the Great Awakenings. There's been a great movement of prayer. And we're seeing that again, and so so we are encouraged to see that many are realizing that uh, we cannot do this without the Lord, and they're turning back and, you know, crying out to God, repenting of their own sins, and it's the, the whole Second Chronicle 7.14 that we talk about probably almost every broadcast, and that really is a very foundational scripture for the National Day of Prayer as well. You know, if my people <laughs> who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith. And then he says, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. And so we know it really has to start with us, Dr. Harper, in the church. Um, we need to be steadfast, um, seeking God for our own lives and to live lives that are honoring. You know, he says, be holy as I am holy. And um, he really desires for us to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us to bring forth that holy lifestyle. And we can still be salt and light. Um, even in a, a country that seems very dark, um, you know, um, the darkness isn't frightening to God. Jesus came to overcome the darkness. And so, you know, we can be that light in a dark place. So I'd encourage people to spend a lot of time in prayer individually, asking the Lord to make you bold. And um, and then wherever you are and you see those opportunities, share the love of Christ with people. Yes, there's very practical ways we can do that. I, I like to uh, you know, respond when people ask me how I am or how are you. I like to say I'm thankful. And uh, hopefully they will ask why and usually to say I'm forgiven. And it sure is great to be forgiven, Gina, of all your sins and have uh, that hope. But uh, a lot of people haven't been freed from their past. They don't know what it looks like to experience unconditional love and forgiveness. Yes, and the Lord is just waiting to, you know, for people to invite Him into their lives, and I would encourage those that may be listening who have never just said, Lord, I need you as my Lord and Savior, come into my life, be my Lord, and forgive my sins, just to just to do that. You know, several weeks ago, we were um, here at the detention center, and there was a young man there that the Lord had really just laid on my heart, you know, as I, he had come down for our Bible study, but I could tell that he really did not understand what it meant to be born again, to be a Christian. And so I asked him, I said, do you understand what Jesus did for you? And he said, no, I don't really think I do. So I laid out um, the gospel very clearly for him. And, um, you know, at that point, I, I sensed he wasn't quite ready, but I, I got a team really praying for him that next week. And um, it so happened that another um, another inmate that came in um, knew the gospel as well and shared the gospel with him um, as well, which is, is interesting to me how God can just use, he can use people that are available. So here's another inmate, you know, sharing with this young man his need to accept Jesus and um, just got word a few days ago that he has surrendered his heart to the Lord and continuing to pray for him. But, um, you know, nobody is beyond. Uh, the scripture says that God's arm is not too short to save. So nobody is beyond his love if they will receive it. And he's reaching out all the time to people. So we need to pray that people would see um, their need for a Savior. And as the times in the world get harder and darker, that uh, that would cause them to to turn to God and not run away from Him. Yeah. Uh, God's faithfulness. Yes, God's faithfulness. And I wanted to mention also, um, since we were talking about, you know, praying for the nation, um, for those that might be listening that are from um, Laramie, um, on Monday, this next Monday, um, June 13th, we are going to have a one-hour worship and prayer time for the nation. We're going to be specifically praying for the elections. So we'd invite, we're going to have live worship, so we'd invite anybody that would like to come to our prayer room, which is located at 105 South 4th Street um, in Laramie. Just come down for an hour, and we're going to just really worship the Lord and, you know, just pray for God's choices and pray for the church, pray for voters. And so it will be a very, a very special time, and we hope to have something like that once a month at least until, you know, this fall when the elections happen. So um, 
the folks can check out our, our Facebook page and um, then they can find out. I try to post the things that we're doing. So if people are interested, um, they can also call me at 307 307- Seven six one zero three six nine, and I would be glad to answer questions about what's happening with our prayer room here. And uh, people can learn more, of course, uh, through your Facebook page. I want to encourage uh, all those listening to to uh, um, like your Facebook page, uh, National Day of Prayer Mountain States, as well as our Facebook page as well. And uh, great resource, uh, Gina, to uh, post um, stories, pictures. You've got. A lot of wonderful pictures and experiences there. And um, also want to encourage people, before I forget, to mention about the importance of the Decision America Tour. That website is decisionamericatour.com for uh, more detailed information and getting involved. And I know that there still needs some volunteers needed to help out with this Decision America Tour. Yes, and especially, you know, as folks... um you know, uh, know about the tour dates in your own state um, to get the word out to people so that they will know that Franklin Graham will be at your capital. You know, they rely a lot on on us that know about it to tell others word of mouth. So it's just very important um, to share that information. I know next week I'm going to try to contact some churches in our state and let them know that Franklin is coming to our capital um, August the 12th, and I know that there are, you know, are some that still haven't heard that news, and so we want to make sure that everybody hears it so they can come and participate. Yep, make, we'll make a difference, and uh, so I would encourage people to sign up and, and support this Decision, Decision America tour and to pray for uh, Franklin Graham and his family as they are uh, being bold and standing for truth here and trying to encourage us all as Christians to, um, you know, to fulfill our responsibility and, and to make a difference here in America because we know America is really in, in serious trouble. And I think one of the most uh, troubling thing part of this uh, campaign, uh, Gina, is, you know, we're thinking about the Supreme Court, the makeup of the Supreme Court. Uh, if, uh, if it gets stacked with, uh, with judges that do not support our Christian values, we're in trouble. Yes, and so this is a very crucial time in the nation. I think many, including <clears throat> Mrs. Dobson, who is the step back from the National Day of Prayer, and I know Ann Graham Watts, our new chairman, and others really have, you know, encouraged us that this is a real crossroads for, um, you know, the United States of America. And would also encourage people to check out our um, webpage. I know that Ann Graham, Ann Graham Watts is now writing quite a few blogs for us would be um, nationaldayofprayer.org and out on that website you will also find um, just great resources uh, to mobilize prayer to start prayer groups prayer guides and uh, again those blogs that are written by um, Ann Graham Lotz and also others on our staff there at the task force in Colorado Springs and so and one of the other things that we do is every month on the first Thursday we have um what we call the Pray for America call, which is about a call that lasts about an hour and a half to two hours on our conference line. And it's just a time where we usually invite different guests to come on and lead us in different prayer um, topics. And so in July, um, the first Thursday of July, um, the Mountain States will be responsible to moderate that call. And then we will be responsible again for the first Thursday of December. So um, I'm going to post those things on our Facebook page as well as we get closer and people can find all the information if they'd like to call in and even just listen in and participate that way. Um, That would be wonderful to have people join us. Yes. Yes, people can get more involved. And so um, many get involved with this, uh, joining you on this uh, broadcast, this conference call and uh very uh, serious time in uh, need of a uh, prayer, uh, repentance, and uh, we uh, we are just uh, in a very uh, precarious situation as never before. And I hope that we can get back on track, Gina. That America will be uh, great again. But we know it, it can't happen unless we're honoring God as a nation. 
Yes, and that's where, of course, you know, um, <clears throat> I think Anne Graham Watts just recently said that, you know, we've asked God to get out of our lives, and he's, uh, I'm kind of paraphrasing what she said, that, you know, he's so such a gentleman that he has backed out because we've told him to leave, you know. And so I think people need to cry out to him and say, God, we do want you in our nation, you know. And um, I believe that as people do that, I, I know that God wants to redeem. I know that he wants America to turn back. And I don't believe that he's done with the United States yet. And so we we just need to continue to, as the Holy Spirit leads, um, to persevere in praying. Pray for those who are in authority. You know, that's a scriptural mandate as well. Whether you like them or agree with them, God tells us we should pray for them. So, you know, just really pray for God's wisdom for our president, our Congress, our Supreme Court, for local officials in your own cities. Um, it's just important for us to be praying for them all the time. Yes. Continue prayer that is so needed, you know, before. Uh, you know, we think about the, the, the serious, uh, the time that we are in, in our nation. And uh, I appreciate your your help, Gina. Uh, all you you got so much going on. And I want to encourage people to pray for you and your family in all of, all this activity that you're involved with. And I'm hoping to be, uh, God willing, be with you in Washington, D.C. in July. don't know how that will work out yet. but uh, um, And uh, I would encourage people to, to pray for our effort to uh, help Israel. Um, several things in, in the works about that. Pray for favor and, and uh, getting coverage of our effort to help Israel. And... Uh, I'm looking forward to hear what, what's happening, you know, in your your future experiences with uh, Vacation Bible School. I know you'll be having an updated article for our newspaper. And uh, Yes, I'm hopeful that that will happen soon. I know, you know, busy schedule being on the road, but uh, yeah, the newspaper's a blessing, so... We will try to get working on all of that as well for the next, um, for the next um, newspaper. And the next issue is our August-September uh, issue, Back to School. And, of course, update on what's happening in the public school system regarding the, the bathroom issue. And uh, we have a See You at the Pole event, a very serious time of prayer for the public schools that are in, uh, in very uh, troubling times with uh, human sexuality issues, uh, homosexual agendas, getting more intense. And... Uh, so please pray for President Obama and his family for help for them to uh, uh, know Christ and to uh, to follow his lead in defending um, our godly American heritage, our family values. Pray for all of our leaders to know Jesus for, as we know, he is the only one that has all the great ideas and uh, is the inspiration that can help make America great again. So, Gina, I'm, I'm thankful for this opportunity that we have together, and uh, I'm looking forward to our next, uh, next time for Intermountain Christian News Hour, and looking forward to seeing you uh, sometime, hopefully not in, in the not-too-distant future. Yes, I look forward to that as well, and <clears throat> if I may go ahead and close us in prayer, I would like to see that. Yeah, please do. Thank you, Gina. Well, Lord, thank you for this time together today on this broadcast. Um, Lord, it's it's great to be able to do this often and just to connect with Dr. Anthony and the Intermountain Christian News. Lord, I continue to pray for a blessing for this ministry, that you would meet the needs there, God, and as the next newspaper is, is being brought together, um, articles coming in. Father, we just pray that you would um, just bring that all together and bring the sponsors that are needed to um, get the, the printing of the newspaper covered and help us to get it into the hands of those who need to see it and read it. We just pray that as people read the newspaper, God, that, that they would find you because I know there is there is uh, information there about who Jesus is. And so we thank you. Thank you for all that's happening this summer with the children and the youth. Bless the vacation Bible schools and the camps. And of course, Lord, you tell us to pray for um, the peace of Jerusalem. And so today we do that, believing God. We know that Israel is the apple of your eye. So we just pray for le- for wisdom for their leaders as well in a, um, you know, in a world environment that has become very anti- 
anti-Semitic. Lord, we just pray for protection over um, the Jewish people and that they would come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So, God, we just um, honor you with this broadcast and thank you for this time and pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, Thank you, Gina. God bless you and your family. Uh, Bless you all with good health. And um, I'm looking forward to talking with you again soon. All right. Thank you, Dr. Anthony. Until next time, God bless you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bye. Uh Uh-huh. Bye-bye. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here with the Intermountain Christian News Hour, wanting to share the gospel message with you. It is clear that you hear the message and respond as soon as possible. In John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Please humble yourself today and admit your sins, and ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and be your Savior today before it's too late. If you died today without Jesus, you would be lost forever in hell, which does exist, contrary to what you've heard from Oprah Winfrey and so many others. Please respond today. To learn more about having a relationship with Jesus, you can check out our website, imcnews.org. And at the top left of our website, you'll see a Who is Jesus uh, banner ad, so you can click on that for more information. Also, you can call 24-7, this toll-free number, one triple eight need him and there's also a website www.needhim.org once again that 24 7 uh, telephone number toll free one triple eight need him we read news every day news that's informative but rarely encouraging the Intermountain Christian Newspaper aims to change that. They present the news you need to know, from what's going on in your community to your world, with encouraging words, motivation, and the resources you need to make positive changes in your life. What is your local government doing that you need to know about? What's happening in your community you need to be a part of? Whether it's a story from your neighborhood, a national story, or an encouraging word, you'll find biblical issues of everyday life in the Intermountain Christian Newspaper. Intermountain Christian News is produced and supported by the work and donations of individuals and churches. You'll find Find it at churches, Christian bookstores, by subscription, and online at imcnews.org. To find out more about supporting this local resource, go online at imcnews.org or call Intermountain Christian News in Boise, Idaho at 208-703-8688. The Intermountain Christian News, a voice sharing the truth on matters dear to people's hearts. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here with the Intermountain Christian News Hour, an outreach of the Intermountain Christian Newspaper, making a difference. And uh, and we need uh, your support uh, of good news. Check out our website at imcnews.org, where you can download our newspaper and make your tax-deductible don- donation to support our uh, voice, our Christian concerns at the White House and in Israel and uh, other places. Uh, do go online to uh, make your donation and support uh, this important news ministry, the only uh, evangelical Christian newspaper of its kind, a grassroots newspaper in our Intermountain regions, spanning from Colorado over to Reno, Nevada. And uh, we uh, currently have needs to uh, cover our uh, our travel expenses for White House and Israel trips. Uh, And also... We need a donated minivan, a uh, vehicle, a good condition, low mileage, uh, air conditioning, and automatic transmission for delivery of our newspapers and other news events that we uh, go to to, to cover uh, representing Christian concerns. So please uh, make your donation at Tax Deductible online at imcnews.org just by clicking on the Donate banner ad that you see there. Thank you for your support of our good newspaper and for your prayers, most importantly, uh, that we can continue to be a voice, a voice of truth for Christians in our inner mountain region, for the glory of God.